Good morning and welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant this morning is Father Justin. He's assisted by Deacon John Barbera. Our Mass intention today is for all of our parishioners and benefactors and for Pasquale Asalone. A few announcements. Envelopes which were sent out in the monthly packet for our 2022 Christmas Club donations were inadvertently made out to the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. This year's Christmas Club will contribute to tuition assistance for needy families in our parish school. Please say, see today's bulletin for the details. Advent Reconciliation is this Monday from 2 to 4 and 6 to 8 p.m. Amidst all the other preparations for the most holy season, please make every effort to prepare yourself for Christmas. And please see today's bulletin for the times of our Christmas Masses. Our processional hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 39. Drop down dew from above you heavens, and let the clouds rain down the just one, that the earth be opened, and bring forth a Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Friends, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Forth, forth, pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. We ask God's blessings upon those ministers of communion that will bring communion to the sick. May they know our love and prayers for them as they carry the body and blood of Christ to those to receive them. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or as high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel about his son descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom you or are you also who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. They shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This fourth Sunday of Advent, I am reminded of my first um, year as a priest uh, during the Christmas season. Um, I was a rookie priest. I was assigned to a parish in the Bronx, and um, Christmas kind of snuck up on me. It was a very busy time. Advent is, is only f- a few weeks and uh, I was very busy in the parish. We had confessions with the school children and the religious education program and the parish and there was lessons in carols and Christmas pageants and plays and Christmas parties and, and it was really very busy. And uh, this, my first year as a priest, uh, Christmas was, say, Monday, you know, so you had the fourth Sunday of Advent, you know, and then Christmas Eve was Sunday night, and then that Monday was Christmas Day. So it was kind of back-to-back, a very busy season. And um, I would normally prepare my homily during the week uh, for, for that Sunday, and the, the way the week looked, it was so crazy, and I looked at the calendar ahead of time, and I said, every night I had something, like I said, confessions and Christmas parties and pageants and whatnot, and again, and Christmas was like back to back, so it'd be the fourth Sunday of Advent, and then uh, the next day would be Christmas. So I was kind of worried about um, how was I going to get my homily together and, and, and for that Sunday of Advent and also Christmas. So I, I looked at my calendar, and I said, okay, well, Saturday, even though I have the vigil mass that night, five o'clock, um, I, could, I have nothing going on during the day. I'll keep my, my day clear, and I'll just spend time praying and, and focusing on what I'm going to preach about for that 
uh, that fourth week of Advent and also uh, Christmas uh, Day. Well, wouldn't you know, Saturday morning comes along and my phone rings and there's a Sisters of Life, I, I was their chaplain, good, good friends of mine, they're beautiful women who, um, who work for the pro-life movement. Um, they take care of uh, women in crisis pregnancies and they also do a beautiful thing called a hope and healing retreat uh, for women who suffer the effects of abortion. So a uh, sister called me and said, Father, we're in a little bit of a bind. Uh, we have a hope and healing retreat and there's a large number of women there, about 40 women or so, and there's only one priest uh, to hear confessions and he's giving the retreat, but we'd like another priest to come and help hear confessions. It's a very difficult time of year, uh, especially for these women who, who lost uh, their child through abortion, and, um, and they really need a lot of healing and a lot of help. So I'm wondering if you could spare your, your, your day, your afternoon, and, and come and, and hear these confessions. Well, I had to get my homily together, right? But then I said, what would the Lord want me to do, right? This is actually showing mercy and love and, 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 and helping these women experience healing and freedom, especially to the sacraments. So of course I said, yes, sister, I'll be there. And I said to the Lord, Lord, you better get this homily done for me because I don't know why I'm gonna, what I'm going to say. I got the evening mass that night, you know. So I was a little anxious, to be honest with you. I said, as a rookie priest and, you know, first time kind of counseling women in the situation and hearing these type of confessions. And so I was a little nervous about that. And then also I had the anxiousness of, you know, preparing my homily for that, that, that evening mass and, and for the weekend and, and for Christmas. So I'm sitting in the chapel right before we're about to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And uh, the priest giving the retreat uh, uh, led everyone in a meditation to kind of prepare their hearts to experience the mercy of God. And uh, he read uh, from the diary of St. Faustina. Now I could tell you, I was sitting there in the back of the, the chapel there, kind of anxious and worried and whatnot, and all of a sudden he, he led us in this beautiful meditation. And there was such a peace that came out, not over me, and I, I know the women there in that chapel, and it kind of focused the season, what, what the season is all about, or what Christmas is all about. And I remember sitting there hearing this, and I said, wow, you know, this is my homily. And I could tell you, I've been a priest for 15 years now, and every year uh, around this time, I go back to this meditation. And every year, it, it nurtures my soul and gives me, brings me back to that moment, to that peace. So I'd like to share it with you. Um, I normally don't do this in church, but once in a while, at least once a year, around this time of year, I'd like to go back to this meditation. And I'd like to um, share it with you. Now, God gave these mystical gifts to St. Faustina, right? She had visions, she, she had these mystical experiences with, with our Lord, and she put it in her diary. And the reason for that was that it wasn't just meant for Sister Faustina. This was meant for all of us, all these years later, who were reading her diary, who were meditating, who were he hearing her words. So uh, the gift that, that God gave us all is um, an imagination, right? So uh, sometimes we use our imagination for bad or evil, but the imagination was meant to use for good. And even in prayer, and this is important for us to do that, uh, we should use our imagination in prayer. So even though we may not see what St. Faustina saw, but she had that experience, and that experience is for you and for me as well. So we could use our imagination to see what she saw, to experience uh, what she experienced. We could do that in prayer. So I want to encourage you now to, to meditate with me. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes now. I said, I grew up in the Bronx, so anytime someone told me to close my eyes, I was always a little leery, you know? You don't know if they're going to steal your wallet or your pocketbook. Even in church, I've heard people got their pocketbook stolen in church, all right? So if you're worried about that, put your hand in your wallet, grab your pocketbook close, but close your eyes, okay? Trust me in this one. And um, let's, um, I'm going to read this passage uh, from her diary. And just to, to experience what she experienced, the, the gift that God gave her, God wants to give us today as well, okay? So she says, When I arrived at midnight mass from the very beginning, I steeped myself in deep recollection, during which time I saw the stable of Bethlehem filled with great radiance. So in your mind's eye, just quiet yourself and Picture the stable of Bethlehem there filled with this great radiance, this great light. The Blessed Virgin, all lost in the deepest of love, was wrapping Jesus in swaddling clothes. But Saint Joseph was still asleep. Only after the Mother of God put Jesus in the manger did the light of God awaken Joseph, who was also praying. 
So now you're there at the stable of Bethlehem and there's Jesus in the manger and then Mary and Joseph there are adoring God in the flesh, the savior of the world, the one they were looking, waiting for. She said, but after a while, I was left alone with the infant Jesus who stretched out his little hands to me and I understood that I was to take him in my arms. So now it's just you and, and the baby Jesus. No one else is there. And he stretches out his little arms to you and you take him in your arms. Jesus pressed his head against my heart and gave me to know by his profound gaze how good he found it to be next to my heart. So I'll read that again. But after a while, I was left alone with the infant Jesus who stretched out his little hands to me and I understood that I was to take him in my arms. Jesus pressed his head against my heart and gave me to know by his profound gaze how good he found it to be next to my heart. And she continues, at that moment Jesus disappeared and the bell was ringing for Holy Communion. So we heard in the gospel, Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel, he came for this purpose, to reconcile us to our Heavenly Father, to save us from our sins, from our selfishness. As I mentioned, it was very healing for those women in that chapel to experience God's love and mercy in that way. And when we look at the, the Christmas creche, we see our God coming to us as a baby, helpless. No one's afraid of a child, no one's afraid of a baby. This is how our God came to us, so that you and I could take him, not just into our arms, so to speak, but every time we come to Mass, the second person of the Blessed Trinity takes flesh on our altar, and we receive his body and blood. Every Mass is Christ's Mass, Christ's Mass. Every Mass, the Eucharist, is God among us. Again, not just so we could take him in our arms, but ultimately take him into our hearts, into our very lives. This is what this season is all about. God born in our midst. So that you and I could experience his healing, so you and I could experience his peace, his love and his joy. Christmas has many emotions for if you're a young child, there's excitement of, of Christmas morning, receiving these gifts. As we get older, maybe people we love is no, no longer with us. Maybe we're, we're burdened with just the difficulties of life at times. And this newborn savior that was born in Bethlehem came for that purpose to bring salvation to us, to bring healing to our souls, to make things right once again with our God. Tomorrow, every Catholic church in New York, Archdiocese and Diocese of Brooklyn are going to have confessions. There's no be better way that you and I could experience the love of the newborn Savior than to receive the sacrament of his mercy and the sacrament of confession. And to prepare our hearts to truly receive him in Holy Communion. So that all the graces that God wants to give us will be poured into our hearts and into our lives. So may this Christmas be a new beginning for us. May we truly have that childlike confidence and trust, in the love that a Heavenly Father has for each and every one of us, so that we may live in the freedom of being sons and daughters of God. May Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Amen.
proclaims Christ to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord For government leaders, that they may be inspired to lead our nation according to the laws established by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord For our parish community, that our hearts may be prepared to welcome the newborn Christ child, we pray to the Lord. Lord For an increase in vocation to the priesthood and religious life in the Akin, especially in our archdiocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord the sick of our parish, especially Joanne Saracella, Anna Milo, Chris Slatter, Manuel Hartstein, Terry Beresford, Angela Separano, Maria Reynolds, Eric Stain, Betty Hoffman, and Art Sullivan. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have died, especially Anthony Constantine, and for all our parishioners and benefactors, and Pasquale Asalon, for whom this holy mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for stronger marriages and families, for those in single life, for a greater respect for all human life, for the intentions in our book of petitions, and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. The offertory hymn is low, how a rose ever blooming, number 80.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. The Lord is the Church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, our pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Oh. 
mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with her holy father, Elijah the prophet, Saint Augustine, Saint Therese, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my but only Meaning him will be the angel Gabriel from heaven came, number 52.
Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Any announcement? So tomorrow's Reconciliation Monday, so please go to confession. Okay. <laughs> Come my tradition at the end of Mass to pray the Hail Holy Queen, so please join me in praying. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, most holy Mother of God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So rejoicing now at devotion of the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 42.